Preservation Program and he's the author of the CSIRO publication Dingo and he joins me now live. Brad Purcell, Lindy Chamberlain Creighton says that no longer can Australians say that dingoes are not dangerous. So how dangerous are dingoes? Uh, dingoes are dangerous depending on the context. So if they're habituated to the presence of humans, then they could be more dangerous than if they're out in the wild, like where I did all my research. So what's your experience with dingoes? Do they approach you or are they afraid? Uh, I've been approached by one dingo once, but uh, it wasn't... Uh, attacking me, it was just whimpering in a corner and sort of, I'd bent down on my knees and it didn't uh, attack me whatsoever. There are still not very many cases of dingoes actually attaching, attacking humans in Australia, are they? No, there's not very many. There's Clinton Gage that died in 2001. Um, there was a recent case on Fraser Island where a kid was left unattended and two dingoes approached the child, but at the same time, the uh, child didn't get attacked. Yet Mrs Chamberlain Creighton seems to be emphatic that she's saying that Australia is a beautiful country but it is a dangerous place and that dingoes are something to be to be fearful of. Do you think a finding like this increases public fear about dingoes? Uh, it could increase some public fear about dingoes especially as they start to encroach on urban settlement um, but if you're out in the wild and you see a dingo I don't think you should be too scared of them. But the, the precautions to take is to keep your distance from them. People shouldn't try to approach them or feed them. No, don't, 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 never feed a dingo. Don't try to approach them too much. If they come towards you, then just sort of stand your ground and don't uh, threaten the dingo too much. If you're a small person, then maybe make yourself look a bit larger. But, uh, yeah, there's lots of different techniques that can be employed. When the coroner was handing down her findings today, she said that she wasn't going to make any recommendations about the control or management of dingoes specifically um, in areas where members of the public are so frequent. But she did say that various wildlife and, and management authorities should actually take some measures to manage the risks. What sort of measures do you think could be taken to, to manage the risks of when dingoes come into contact with humans? Oh, there's lots of different things. So... If you're managing any sort of environmental problem, the first place you should probably look is at the humans in the area. So if you can manage the rubbish, if you can desex all of the domestic dogs in the area, uh, we can employ howling techniques and you can also employ scent marking techniques. To what do you mean by howling techniques, sorry? Um, they've used it in Poland and also in other places such as America and to, to deter wolves. And what they do is they play the sound of a wolf pack howling and that scares away other wolf packs or other wolves in the area that have been attacking livestock or anything like that. Also in the United States, though, there's some states that are actually want to hunt wolves. Uh, do you ever think that would come to a, a scenario like that here in Australia where the dingoes would be hunted? Uh, recently, we have come to that scenario where wild dogs are allowed to be hunted in national parks. But uh, in terms of making Australia environmentally sustainable, I think the jury's still out. Dingoes and wolves maintain a, a role in the ecosystem as a top order predator. So if we can manage them sustainably, then we might be able to manage Australia more sustainably as well. A final question. Do we have any idea of how many dingoes there actually are in Australia? Uh, Australia's a big place. Out, out in the Blue Mountains, I sort of uh, approximate there's 400 dingoes in the southern section. So if you're looking south from Katoomba, I'd say there's about 400. But um, if you put that across Australia, then there could be millions. Thousands. <laughs> Brad Purcell, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. And now let's check some of the other stories that we're following today.